Well, we're going to switch over to section 4.8 now in James Stewart's calculus textbook entitled Newton's Method. Um, I see my apostrophe is in the wrong location there. Sorry, Newton is not a plural person. For all I know, he's just one person. Uh, anyways, um, what, what we're going to develop now is another approximation method that uses the x-intercepts of functions. Um, so consider the picture you see in front of you. Consider we have a function f that's given, and we're desiring to find an x-intercept uh, for this function f. And let's call it r, r for root of the function. So we want to find this and be aware that what we're trying to say is that f of r is going to equal zero since it's an x-intercept. Um, although we don't know what r is, we can make a guess, right? When we draw this thing, uh, the image you see in front of you is a computer-generated picture, so it is actually fairly accurate. Um, but we could draw by hand and get a pretty good estimate. Admittedly, I haven't drawn the scale on the x or y axis whatsoever here. But if we did, we could get an estimate like, oh, maybe r is close to one or close to two, or maybe it's close to one and a half or something. And suppose our first estimate is x1, right? Which you see on the screen right here. Um, I want to mention to you that other textbooks, when they talk about Newton's method, sometimes their first guess they'll call x zero. Uh, some people, when they start counting on their fingers and toes, they start with the number zero instead of one. Um, we'll, we'll start with one right here. So this is gonna be our first guess. And at this picture, it might not look like a very good guess. It's like, holy cow, there's a huge gap uh, between r and x1 there. But there's two reasons why we choose x1. x1 might be like the nearest integer to r, and also, I, I'm not showing you the scale, right? If you were to zoom in, everything looks like they're far apart. But if you zoom out, they almost look identical. So in terms of good or bad, you're always talking about a scale of some kind. And so don't really worry about too much about it here. X1, just consider that to be a first guess. Whether it's a good guess or a bad guess, don't worry about it too much. And so with this first guess, X1, what we're going to do is we're going to form the tangent line to the function f with respect to this first value x1. So we look at the point of tangency, and then we construct the tangent line, uh, which was here in green. This will come down and uh, it will, this tangent line will somewhere intersect uh, the x-axis. That point of intersection we're gonna call x2. Now it doesn't necessarily have to hit the x-axis. If you had a horizontal line, uh, a horizontal tangent line, it would never hit the x-axis. But basically that just means we don't want to take our first guess at a local extremum. Uh, pick something else than that. So we, we, we take the tangent line and then we get a new x-intercept, x2, right here. Now, as you can see in the picture, the second guess, the second point, actually seems a little bit better than the first one. It got closer to r. And so... Uh, Newton's methods can be based upon iterating this process. Uh, can we do it over and over and over again? But before we talk about that, I want to figure out if we know x1 and we know the function f, how do we find x2 right here? Well, this green line is none, none other than the linearization we were talking about in section 3.10. So L of x, the line, the, the green line there, L, it's f prime at x1 times x minus x1 uh, plus f of x1, like so. And if we're looking for the x-intercept, we're trying to look out for when the line is equal to, when the line hits the x-axis, that's when the y-coordinate l of x equals zero. So we get zero equals f prime of x1 times, well, when does the y-coordinate become zero? Well, that happens at the x-coordinate x2. That's the point we're looking for right here. And so using this equation, we're gonna solve it for x2 here. Um, so first we're going to subtract f of x1 from both sides. So minus f of x1 minus f of x1 so that they cancel on the left hand side. Uh, so this gives us that now that f prime of x1 times x2 minus x1. This will equal negative f of x1. And so then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by f prime of x1, f prime of x1. Let me move it down for a little bit more space. Well, then the left-hand side, those divisors cancel out. We end up with x2 minus x1 equals negative f of x1 over f of x2. 
And then the last thing to do is going to be add x1 to both sides of the equation. And we get that x2 equals x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. There you go. And so this right here shows us how we can compute this number x2, this x coordinate using x1. So uh, using tangent lines, the linearization from section 3.10, uh, we get this new point x2. Well, Newton's method is based upon iterating this process. So taking our picture here again, we had our first initial guess x1. We come up down, uh, we come up here, we find the function, we form the tangent line, we come back down. Uh, we then find the point x2. Then we do this process again. Uh, let's form the tangent line associated to x2. Uh, bring that back down. That'll then give us an x-coordinate x3. And we do this again uh, to get us x4. Then we do this again to do x5. And then we can keep on doing this, getting closer and closer and closer to this root r. And that's the basis of Newton's method. Um, you do this process over and over and over again. All right. And so the first guess then gives us the second guess. The second guess then gives us the third guess. And so we get this formula, this sequence of numbers, uh, which we'll call x n here. So if we know the nth number of the sequence, we can compute the n plus first term, the next term. So like when we have the third term, we can then calculate the fourth term. If we have the fifth term, we can calculate the sixth term. And then if we have the one millionth term, we could find the, one, the millionth and first term. And the, 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 the success of Newton's method comes from the fact that this limit will equal r. That is, if we take the limit as these numbers xn go towards, in, as n goes to infinity, the xn's will approach the root of the function r. And this is actually a pretty slick calculation. I want to kind of show you how that might work. Uh, so let's say we want to look for a solution to the equation x cubed minus 2x minus 5. Well, to begin with, we, Newton's method is useful for finding uh, x-intercepts of a function. So what we have to do is you have to take a function and recognize we're looking for an x-intercept. Uh, Newton's method is going to involve the derivative, so we calculate that. We get 3x squared minus 2. And then, remember, x in plus 1 will equal x to the n minus f of x n over f prime of x n. So if we have the initial value of x 1 equals 2, uh, what we're going to do is, okay, x1, make a table, x1 is equal to 2, what's x2 going to be? Well, to find x2, we're going to take x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. And so if we plug in specific values, 2 was our x1, so we have to take 2 minus f of 2 over f prime at 2. And so based upon what we had before, we have 2. Remember, the function was x cubed minus 2x minus 5, which we saw. If we plug in 2, uh, that's going to become a negative 1. I'll let you double check the details there. And the derivative, we can still see. If we evaluate the derivative at 2, uh, we, we get 2 squared, which is 4, times 3, which is 12, minus 2, which is 10. So you end up with 2 plus a tenth aka 2.1. So that's the second estimate that we would have there. Um, and then to find x3, what we would do is we would compute x3 by taking x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. And so that requires that we take 2.1 minus, uh, next we're going to take f of 2.1 and then this sits us above f prime of 2.1. And all 2 point, I mean, 2.1 is a little bit more difficult to do. Um, it's certainly not impossible. Uh, the thing you see here is that if you plug in 2.1 into the polynomial, it only requires addition, multiplication, uh, and subtraction to compute uh, f of 2.1. If you do that, you're going to end up with 0 0.061. And then with the derivative, which is also a polynomial, you'll have to add, multiply, and subtract. Uh, but f prime of 2.1 should turn out to be 11.23. And so now you have to add, subtract, multiply, divide with decimals. But this four, uh, this four function arithmetic we can actually do 
Uh, this will turn out to be, in the end, you get approximately 2.0946. Uh, and so that's what we would say here for 2.3. Uh, actually, I should say 2.0946. And so, you know, these numbers are kind of close. And they're going to, every time you do this process, you're going to get one step closer, one step closer, one step closer to computing uh, the solution to this equation. So what I actually want to do right now is actually switch, switch over to a web browser really quick. Um, this is actually a Newton calculator that's available uh, by desmos.com. Uh, you can find a link for this inside of, inside of the, the description for this lecture right here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to type in the original function we had. What did we have before? We had the function x cubed uh, minus 2x minus 5. And we want to know this when this thing equals zero. Our initial guess was two. You can slide this over to two. Um, if you want to see the function, this is what it looks like. It's a polynomial function right there. And one thing I like about this Desmos calculator is it will give you the answer. So it it goes up to x5. x5 you get as 2.09455148154. Uh, which was pretty close to what we had before. But you can also see visually what's happening here. So as we zoom in a little bit on the function, um, if x1 was equal to 2, you can see the vertical line and the tangent line that goes about. The tangent line is going to be a good estimate of the function. You can also look at the next iteration here in orange. All right? You might have to zoom in a little bit to see it at a better scale. Something like this. You can also see in green x3 which just so you're aware, if we expand this down, X3 was 2.09545. Uh, this was the estimate we had before, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, we, we had rounded to four decimal places, but that's accurate right there. Uh, we can see the fourth iteration and the fifth iteration if we wanted to. And so one thing I like about this Desmos calculator is it, it'll calculate up to X5, but it also shows you step-by-step step what exactly the tangent lines are. Uh, you can find this link in the video description below. Um, also, there's another link that I want to share with you. This one's from planetcalc.com. Uh, the link is below as well, for which you can calculate uh, a, a solution, an x-intercept, using uh, using this calculator to Newton's method. So we'll type in it again, x cubed uh, minus 2x minus 5. We'll take an initial value of 2. Um, we can determine how precise we want to be. So let's do a little bit of, uh, let's have it one, two, three, four, five, six uh, places of decimal accuracy. We probably should also uh, put this down. So you can change how many decimals it'll display. You can hit the calculate button, but it seems to be doing it automatically. Um, I apologize that the the the, the screen, the, the font looks a little small right here. Um, it's It's got some issues here. Uh, anyways. Uh, x cubed minus 2, why is it forgetting something? Probably because you need to have a probably a multiplication between the 2 and the x there so it can recognize it. Still not. All right, let's try calculating and see if it gets it. Okay, it got the right function this time. You have to hit recalculate to uh, make sure it's graphing the right thing. And so what it does is it provides to us accurate to six decimal places, the approximation, but it also shows the steps, which I like about that. It shows you x1, x2, x3, x4. It stopped at x4 because by x4 it got six places of accuracy. If we wanted to do eight decimal places of accuracy, we could add a few more decimals in there. Hit recalculate. Uh, you'll get this answer right here. And it looks like it was already accurate to eight decimal places. That's sweet. This thing can actually converge really, really quickly. And feel free to use these calculators as you work through these Newton type problems. No one should ever have to should ever have to do this by hand. We could though. We actually could. Um, but the computer helps us with these tedious calculations. So I want to show you really quick how could one use uh, Newton's method to approximate, say, the sixth root of two. Uh, well, the idea here is to find the 6th root of 2, we have to find a function for which the 6th root of 2 is an x-intercept 4. So if you're like, oh, I want x to equal the 6th root of 2, well, take the 6th power of both sides, you get x to the 6th equals 2. Um, set the right-hand side equal to 0, you get x to the 6th minus 2 equals 0. And so this is the function we care about. f of x equals x to the 6th minus 2. And for Newton's method, we do need to know the derivative. We're going to get 6x to the 5th. 
And so Newton's formula would then say that n x n plus one will equal x to the n minus uh, x to the sixth minus two over six x to the fifth. Uh, for which case, if we wanted to do like say x equals two, uh, or x two, I should say, then we take x one minus x one to the sixth minus two over six x one to the fifth. We'll need some initial guess of what that is. Now the sixth root of two, let's see, um, it's somewhere between one and two to the six, which was at sixty four. So I'm gonna say it's probably close to one. We'll take x one to be one. And so then you can work with that estimate. Uh, X2 will equal 1 minus 1 to the 6 minus 2 over 6 times 1 to the 5th. Uh, any, 1 to any power is going to be 1. So we get 1 minus negative 1 over 6. Uh, so we get 1 plus a 6th as an answer. And we can estimate that if we wanted to. Uh, what is a sixth? After all, it's half of a third. Third is 0.3333. So if you give one and a sixth, uh, we're looking at just a, approximately 1.16. And then six will just repeat after that forever, ever after that. So stop after a while. That gives us the first estimate. Um, if I was going past that, I would want to use a calculator. So if we tried that here on the planet calc calculator, x to the sixth, Use a caret for exponents. X to the six minus two. We'll have the initial estimate of one. And let's go with the crazy estimates we need. We had before calculate. Um, double check to see the math right here is typed correctly. So you know you had it. It'll give you the derivative. And he gives us the estimate of 1.12246205. That wasn't quite as good. I mean, that's better than the 1.166666 we had before. But that was just the first guess. I guess it was the second guess. Uh, this right here, the 1.1222, it got there. It took five steps to get that level of accuracy accurate to eight decimal places. Um, but it works out really nicely. And so that's what I wanted to kind of say here. This kind of gives you a little bit of under the hood of how one could estimate some of these approximations like radicals. Uh, how, how does a calculator do them? Newton's method is a very, very nice algorithm for doing that that uses derivatives and tangent lines. Um, and that brings us to the end of the video today. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like this video. Subscribe if you want to see uh, more content and more updates in the future. And also feel free to post any comments if you have any questions. I will be glad to answer them in the future. Um, until next time, keep on calculating. Bye.